Hi guys, it's Claire. Welcome to the seventh and final tutorial for the Joanna Basford Magical Jungle uh, colouring page. If you've been following along, you know that we've only got the Orkarpi left to do. Um, he's a really unusual beast. Now I've zoomed right in on him today because I want you to see what I'm doing in terms of realistic colouring with his body musculature. Um, what I'm going to do is, I was going to try and show you a picture on my iPad of um, uh, some images of Orkarpi that I researched, but I'm zoomed in too much. So I'm just going to show you a practice that I had yesterday. So if I just put this into shot, you'll be able to see him. So they're very weird and unusual. They kind of have um, the back legs and front legs of essentially a zebra and then the body of Bambi, basically. Um, beautiful creatures when you actually look them up online. So hopefully we're going to try and replicate him in our book today. So when you're trying to think about colouring animals, it is good to have a look at images online so that you can understand what they look like in real life. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to, you won't be able to see as I say because I'm zoomed in too far, but I'm going to read out the colours that I've got out ready. And don't worry because I will list these on the posts on Facebook and YouTube. So I've got my Prismacolor pencils, I've got myself my white pencil, I've got 10% French grey, I've got 20% French grey, I've got putty beige, and then for browns, which we're going to do his body in, I've got sienna brown, I've got chocolate, and I've got dark brown, and I've also got my black pencil out because we'll be doing some highlights where um, the shadows would fall in terms of under his hips and his legs and just underneath his chin. Then I've also got um, my Tombow Mono Eraser ready, I've got my Blender Pencil ready and I've also got um, my Stedler Pigment Liner uh, 0.2 nib so it's a very fine tip and you'll see that I've um, just pre-coloured in some of his black stripes here with the black uh, pigment fine liner just to save time really because they're quite detailed I've not coloured these ones in because around where his um, bottom is going to be we're going to be using white um, coloured crayon to actually blend away into his white legs which is quite difficult and sometimes can pick up black pigment when you're using white pe uh, pencil so I've left those blank because I don't want to smudge any colours I've also just quickly coloured in his tail and I've done that in um, dark brown, which is the darkest of the three browns. Again, it's just block colour in dark brown, um, which is why I've not um, showed you video in it. So I think what we'll do is we're going to start with his, his legs that are in shadow. So that this front leg here that is at the back and this hind leg here that is at, that is at the back. Now, as I said, a carpy's legs are white. But because this is in the background, you would expect that there would be less light hitting the light of his legs. So what we're going to do is we're just going to quickly take our 10% and 20% French grey. Because when white is in shadow, it becomes grey. So I've got my 10% here, my 10% French grey. And all I'm going to do is to about his halfway down his legs. And it's a very, very light grey. I'm just going to block colour that portion in there. So it will still look like he's got a white hind leg, but it'll just look like it's in shadow a little bit with it being at the back. <laughs> and you probably won't be able to see that um, massively clearly because it's such a light colour, but it will make a difference in your book. And then I've got my 20% French grey, which is a slightly darker shade. And I'm just going to take this bottom bit because clearly that part of his leg in the background is further down into the undergrowth. It will be that much, a little bit darker again because there'd be less, less light hitting it. So, there we are. It's as easy as that. And I'm going to do the same for um, this leg here, the front leg, but the one that's in the distance. So I'm just going to take my 10% um, French grey to about here and I'm being careful to colour around the bits that I'm going to, the stripes that I'm going to fill in black. And then just this tiny bit here, I've got my 20% French grey, just as it goes into that shadow there, I'm just going to make it that tiny bit darker. 
So now I've got those on, I can quickly take my fine liner and just put these in here. And then we'll move on to his head. There we go. Quite precise. So what I'm going to do is um, a carpet have. Uh, so I want my 10% French grey. So I want my 10% French grey and my putty beige for this for this um, initial piece. Now, a carpi have um, chocolate and black noses, but this part of their face is lighter. It's kind of like a creamy grey. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take the 10% French grey and lightly, just in the middle of his face here, just scumble in. And I'm not pressing too hard at this point. Just scumble in, kind of like an oval shape around his eye. Like that. And what we're going to do is make the outside a tiny bit darker in the putty beige colour and then go back and really put some more of the colour on. So I've got my putty beige. Again, at this point, I'm just going to scumble and you can immediately see it's slightly darker. And I'm not pressing hard again, so I'm just scumbling around the outside of his face just to make that inside around his eye that little bit much lighter. Like that. And you can just see that highlight is our, is our area a little bit as well. And it kind of makes his face look a little bit 3D. So I'm going to go back to my 10% French grey. And now I'm pressing quite hard. And I'm just going to go over that line, that variation in colour. And again, just round his eye where I put the original 10% grey. I'm pressing hard now and I'm just building that colour up. And then it's a case of going back to your putty beige. And pressing a little bit harder over these bits around the outline of this portion of his face. So you can see we've kind of made ourselves a nice little highlight there around his eye area, like that. And basically that's all we have to do to the side of his face. Really quite easy. It's just a matter of looking at images online and picking yourself the right colours to make him look realistic. So I can actually put my putty beige and my grey colours to one side now, I think. So my 10%, my 20% .20 French grey putty beige, I'll put to one side. Then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take my black and dark brown colours. So I've got my black pencil. What I'm going to do is make this portion of his face um, a little bit black at the very bottom and then go up in lighter and lighter brown shades so that by the time it reaches his head which is more in sunlight it'll be in a slightly um, lighter shade of brown again just thinking where the light is playing down on him so I'm just going to make myself a little mark there just a little marker pressing very lightly and then I'm going to colour this in in quite a heavy black like that And this video will take a little while, as I say, maybe about 25, 25 minutes, half an hour, because we're trying to make a realistic animal, so apologies for the length, but it will be worth it, I promise. Then I've, I've got my dark brown pencil, and I'm going to take this colour, I'm just going to make myself a little mark here, lightly, and then I'm going to, much firmer hand, colour in this bit here. Just make a little ring around his nose there. Because um, what I want to do is just fill that in in pigment liner just to make it stand out. So I'm pressing heavily and then when I get to this little mark here that I made in black in light hand, I'm just going to go over it quite hard. And because the dark brown and the black are fairly close together in colours, you'll just see it melts into each other quite well. Like that. And you could colour his nose in, in... Um, black pencil but the, the pigment liner just works really well because you can get in quite close like that. Okay. So I'm going to put my black pencil down and I go for my next brown colour which is chocolate and I'm going to take this to about here, I'm going to take this to about his forehead so again I'm just going to make myself a little marker lightly, pressing on heavier now like that 
and then again pressing quite heavily over <laughs> where it meets the dark brown colour. So you can see that it's, it's going further up his face and he's more into the sunlight. The light is catching the browns and making them a bit more and making them appear lighter <laughs> like that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do the inside of his ears because the next colour I want to use here is the same colour as the outside of his ears but I want to do the inside first. So while I've still got my chocolate and my dark brown colours in my hand I'm just going to very quickly, I've got the chocolate here which is the lighter of the two I've got in my hand and just colour this bit in quite firm. I've got a light strip there. Again over here just a little light marker Pressing harder on this section, like that. <laughs> and then I'm just going to take my dark brown and just blend that out there and then towards the bottom of his ears, which is going to make that tiny bit darker. Like that. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the lightest of my three browns, which is Sienna Brown. And what I'm going to do is, because I know that I kind of want to take it to about here, because that's again where the light would be further down on his body. So this very top bit would be the lightest. And then all I'm going to do is kind of just press lightly over this section here to make it blend into that other brown colour. Like that. And again, you can use your blender pencil a little bit if you wanted to just go over that and then all I'm going to do is block colour in sienna brown around here and because we're using a lighter colour you can see now that highlights the inside of his ears and a carpy range in colours from kind of gingery brown to dark brown like a chocolate dark brown which is why I've chosen these colours because hopefully they're the most realistic for this particular Beastie. There we go. Dead easy. So I'll, I'm just block colouring now this little bit that I've got marked out. There we are. Pleased with that? Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my black colour. Now I said at the start that we're using black because we're going to highlight some areas which would be in complete shadow so one of those areas is going to be under his chin. Now I don't want it to look like another stripe so all I'm going to do is I'm pressing medium hard now and just make a little line round there so that just makes his chin look like it's sticking out a little bit like that. Medium firm. And while I've got my black pencil in my hand, I'm actually going to put one in the crease of his leg here. Because that would also be a little bit in shadow. So we'll just emphasise that a little bit. And then I'm going to put one just about here, I think. Because again, this would be going into shadow. Like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my dark, uh, yes, sorry, my dark brown pencil. I'm just going to put the others down for a moment. So all of this portion of his neck is going to be um, dark brown. So I'm just going to make a little marker here, very lightly. And then what I'm going to do is from here to here, just quickly block colour this in dark brown. So bear with me. And where I've put this black for shadow, I'm going over this quite firm. But because the um, dark brown is slightly lighter, you can still see the black underneath, which just gives that nice shadow effect. And before I go any further down the neck, because this is my lightest brown and I've got my darkest brown in my hand, I'm just going to quickly take my chocolate colour, which is the mid-brown. Just literally go over that tiny bit there like that, so it just grades it out. <laughs> Back to, the uh, back to the dark brown, sorry. And I'm going to quickly block colour this in, being careful of these stripes that I've pre-coloured pre on his neck. The pigment liner is quite good because it's pretty non-smudgeable, but I'm still just being a little bit careful because we've put a lot of work into the piece and it would be a shame to just smudge something at the last minute. 
so please just bear with me a few seconds and I'll just colour this in. Hopefully if you've enjoyed doing this with me. Um, sometimes I would probably tend to do any animals in the piece first. I know when I was colouring the other piece that I showed you yesterday with a waterfall in, I coloured in Nelly the elephant first. Um, but because I'd not seen this animal before and I needed to do some research on him, it made sense to kind of do it last because it gave me a chance to have a look at what he looked like properly in real life and then also um, to have a practice at him. So I'm just going up to the marker I made originally and as I get towards it I'm just going to lightly just scumble because what I'll do is later when we've done his tummy I'll come back and blend this out. So I'm just going to lightly scumble that area like that. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to have a look at um, filling in his body. And as I say, because the legs are white, we won't have a lot to do with the actual legs. But there's a trick to getting the, the, the animal look life lifelike in 3D. And you've got to kind of think in 3D terms. So clearly the animal would have a rounded tummy in real life. And he would also have kind of big muscles at the top of his legs. Um, so what we're going to try and do is because those areas on the animal would stick out more in the sunshine because they're rounded, we're going to try and make that effect. You can see on this practice I've done, if I just show you here, you can see that these lighter areas here kind of indicate where he has muscles and his tummy would stick out. So how I did that was I've got my lightest, I've got my sienna brown, and all I'm going to do is very lightly just sketch myself out what I think would be the lighter area of his tummy like that and it can be really rough like that and don't worry too much if you go over this swirl here that you've um, done in pigment liner first because as I say it's pretty non-smudgeable and then all I'm going to do for this stage is just lightly very lightly because remember we're going to add colour we're going to build colour is just scumble that in like that And you can see it's not picking up any of that pigment liner underneath. So I don't want to, what I've done is there, I've just gone over the crease of his leg and clearly his tummy wouldn't go that far. So I'm just going to take that out a little bit. Like that. That's okay. This is a sand eraser and it just... It's better at removing colour, so that's fine. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is, I've still got my lightest colour, the Sienna Brown. I'm going to mark myself out a little ring here in kind of a nod to the muscle that would be at the top of his leg, like that. And again, just lightly scumble it in, like that. Okay. Now before I do anything else here, because now I understand where is where the, where the 3D sections will be, I'm actually going to mark myself out here where I want the overall shading to stop because as I say his legs are white. So again I've got my lightest sienna colour and I'm just going to mark out very lightly here where I don't want to colour any further down at all, like that. And again across his bum around about here. So following the line of his hind leg. And then before we go any further on the body, what I'm going to show you how to do is quite a nice trick. Because clearly you've got a part of the animal that is brown, dark brown it will be in the end in this part, going directly into white. How on earth do you blend that? Well, a good answer is use your white pencil. So I've got my white pencil. And I'm going to start on this bit here. And all I'm going to do is where I've marked this out lightly, I'm just going to, and I'm pressing quite hard, I'm going to scumble over, and I'm trying to avoid his stripes I haven't coloured in again. I'm just going to scumble over, so can you see how that brown now just kind of fades <laughs> into the white of his leg without too much gradation? And if you want to make that even better, you can even just blend it a little bit more, <laughs> like that back to the brown very very lightly just that you're trying to get everything to just melt away into the white of his the base of his leg like that there 
technical. Black to white. Like that. So you kind of usually you would blend colours that are fairly close together. Um, but here, because we're going to, from brown to, to white, that's a really, a really neat trick with your white pencil. So again, I'm going to do the same over here. Press quite hard. And it doesn't matter if you pick up a little bit of this brown colour because you want that. Because it makes it more realistic instead of just having kind of like a, a brown line and then nothing. And I'm actually going to, because this part of his bound back would be a little bit browner as well, I'm actually going to follow that a little bit further there. So I'm just going to curve it round a little bit more slightly. So I'm back to my sienna brown and just lightly putting that in like that. <laughs> and I'm back to my white. And I'm pressing hard and I'm just scumbling, scumble blending those edges. Like that. Okay. <laughs> Again, I'm just going to go back to my sienna brown. Oh, lightly, 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 lightly. Over this bit. Back to white. And you can play around until you get the shading across his, um, the back of his leg exactly how you want it when you've had a look at them online. And you can play around with it, you know, as much as you want until you, you're happy in yourself <laughs> that you've got a good blend. So that's pretty much all we need to do for the legs. Um, what I'll do right at the end is quickly pigment fill these stripes in, but you can see why I didn't. Because I'm using white around here, if I'd have pre-filled these in in the black pigment liner, we'd have probably picked up some of that pigment liner on the end of this pencil. Hence the reason why I left these blank, because I didn't want to make any smudges. So I'm going to put my white pencil down, I'm going to put my blender pencil down and what I've got in my hand now is my three brown colours. So remember we used sienna brown here, I'm going to take my mid brown which is my chocolate and I'm going to just mark myself out because what we're going to do is blend this lightest into the darkest colour here but we want to make his tummy stick out because he'd be nice and well fed in a jungle. I'm just going to mark myself out a little line like this in chocolate and very lightly again just scumble that colour in lightly I'm going over the edge of the sienna brown a little bit and we're going to build that colour up and again this is kind of making the video a little bit longer but it's definitely worth you seeing how to do it And again, around this muscle here. Like that. Just scumble that little bit around. Like that. Um, then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go back to my lightest sienna brown colour. And I'm going to start to scumble that much a little bit harder. So I'm not pressing overly hard, but I'm pressing quite hard. And I'm just going to scumble over that inside bit that we did lightly and just build that colour up. And again, you don't have to worry too much about going over these pigment lines, as you can see, because the Stedler pigment liner is very, very good at not smudging. But we would have picked some up on the tip of our white pencil over here. So you can see his lovely kind of gingery coat, which would be that colour as he's standing in the sunshine. And I find that the scumbling is, is kind of the easiest way when you're working with a round shape rather than kind of doing that, which is why I'm using this technique. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my darkest colour, which is my dark brown, and for the rest of this part of the body, I'm just going to lightly colour him in. You can see the little circles I'm making. 
Again, just going over very slightly the edges of that mid-brown colour. Like that. To about there, because then what we'll do is we'll blend in this bit of his, his bottom. So again, over here. And you can see why I left that little bit of shading on the light touch from his neck, because this is how you get a nice blend with his body. And again, under his tummy, following that round shape. Like that. There we go. Um, so I'm going to go back to my Sienna Brown and just build this up a little bit here where we want this colour to kind of melt into here. So just a tiny bit of sienna brown and then that gap that I've left will be the mid-brown. Pressing lightly just again and then what we're going to do is because you can see we've built that shading up now so you can see where he's going to be light and where he's going to be dark. So I'm just going to go back to my lightest sienna brown and where we've got the muscle at the top of his leg I'm pressing a lot harder now, scumbling it, like that. And as long as you can kind of try and understand where the light would hit and where, is, where the muscles of animals are and, and how the shadows would kind of fall on his body, it's a lot easier if you've kind of had a look and thought about that before you start. It just makes it more realistic. So I'm going to my chocolate, which is my mid-brow, and we're going to go into this middle layer here and scumble like that and you can see I'm pressing a little bit harder not massively hard but a little bit harder because you can see more colour on the page oh that's good dark brown pencil's broken so I'm just going to grab my sharp <laughs> over here stick into that kind of oval shape that we made out and again around that muscle on the top of his leg like that then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my sienna brown my lightest brown and just over this join here and I'm now pressing quite firm. It's just to smooth that variation in colour out. So I'm just building it up and building it up and building it up. Like that. <laughs> Looking good. Um, so what I'll do is, before I move off my sienna brown, I think I'm just going to, because we won't be using our darkest brown on this little piece of his leg here, so I think I'm just going to lightly blend this away, like this, chocolate brown. Sienna brown. Just very lightly, because this is where we blended in the white. So I'm just going to quickly pick up my white pencil. Sienna brown. Just blend that away like that. So that's that top part of his leg done basically. And then what I'll quickly do is take my fine liner because now that I've finished that bit I can colour him in. two of his stripes going in, like that. That's good. I've got, just missed that little 
cook there, that's better. So now I'm going to go to my darkest brown. I'm going to put my white pencil down. I don't need that. So I've got dark brown in my hand. And I'm just going to go again in a firmer hand and scumble this darkest shade in. Like that. There we go. And this is the, this is the colour of an acarpi. It's kind of dark brown, but clearly where the... As I said, where the sun hits, he's, he's, the, the images that you see of them online, they get kind of like a lovely gingery colour in the light. And we'll go back to our mid-brown and just blend this bit in a little bit better. So I'm now using straight strokes just along his back instead of scumbling just for that little bit more. Accuracy. There we go. A little bit in there like that. Then I'm going to go back to my mid brown, my chocolate brown, and just basically go over this whole area like this, medium hard. So that everything just blends really, really nicely together. And you can see now that we've built the colour up where we've used the lighter sienna brown in the middle, how it really highlights his um, his tummy and the muscles. It's a really, really good technique. So again, I'm just going to... Still using the chocolate. And I'm going to quickly switch to my lightest brown for this little bit here. And just blend that in. Just so that we've got the lightest colour coming out next to our white. Like that. <laughs> Quickly take my white pencil, but I don't really need to do anything here. This has blended quite well, actually. I'm pleased with that. Like that. And then all we need to do is finish the underside of his tummy in that um, lovely, deepest, dark brown colour. So again, pressing quite hard, scumbling over. So you can see once you've got the tips and tricks in your head of how to make him realistic, it's actually not rocket science. As long as you understand the basics of light, and once you've kind of nailed that, sorry, I'm going back to my chocolate here, um, it's a lot easier. And you can see where I put that black underneath as the shadow just at the start, how well that works in the little crease of his leg there. I think finally what I'm going to do is, in terms of the brown colours, is just go back to the sienna and just make that, I'm pressing on quite hard now, and just make that a little bit richer. Like that. And I hope, you may be able to hear the table juddering, but hopefully the camera isn't moving as much as it has been. My husband's been helping me create some weird and wonderful um, gadgets to hold the phone better. And I think I'm pretty pleased with that. So what I'm going to do is just very finely put these prism colours down and go back to my pigment liner and just quickly finish his stripes. And I'm actually going to go for a little bit of a thicker one actually because those stripes are quite a little bit wider. So I'm going to go for a 0.5 and it'll just speed things up a little bit because the nib is that much, well, I'm saying that much, it's a tiny difference, but it is thicker, you can see. Because these stripes are a tiny bit wider, you don't have to be quite as accurate, although there's, there's still quite a little bit of concentration involved. There we go. And what I'll do is in a second, because this means we have finished our picture. I will zoom out. And you'll be able to see the whole thing in all its glory. And I hope you've enjoyed doing it. There we go. Go over this little bit here. And 
I think we have a finished picture. I'll put my fine liner down. And I'm going to try and let's see if I can zoom out so you can see the whole picture. Apologies why I adjust this so you can see it. Bring that up like that. Move this into shot a little bit more. Look at that. How good is that? So I really hope you've enjoyed doing this with me. Um what I wanted to talk quickly to you about before we finish is um Sometimes I gift pieces and if you've watched my video on suggested kit If I do want to remove a page from a book, it's not a nice thing to do I know it's not and I know some of you wouldn't but the kindest and easiest way to take a page out is with a very sharp just very cheap craft knife and a ruler right into the crease of the book um, It means you won't be able to color what's on the other side of course but that's if you wanted to frame it um, that's the easiest way to um, kindest way to remove it from the book so I'm I'm actually pretty pleased with that so in terms of like a first tutorial and some of the things you've been sending me I think we've all done extremely well and I hope you've enjoyed it there'll be more tutorials to come um, I'm gonna look at light sources and um, making black backgrounds and um, some of you may also know that I've had the honour of um, becoming the administrator for the Joanna Bass Video Pages Facebook site. I'm not entirely sure what I've let myself in for yet, but hopefully I will speak to you soon on the tutorials and through the Facebook page. And I hope you've enjoyed it, ladies. Thank you. Bye-bye.